Next up, we have Nick Ledger, who's Employee Experience Specialist at Microsoft, who is going to share with us uh, a lot more information about something that's a very hot topic at the moment, Viva Engage. Yammer, Viva Engage, this festival. Last year was called the Yammer Festival. This year it's the Yammer and Viva Engage Festival. And everybody's trying to make head or tail of what's going on. I'll tell you what, it's actually really simple, um, but I'll let Nick explain that. Um, Nick, can I ask you to jump on, share your screen? Perfect, and fire away, thank you. No worries, Pete. And, and can I just say, how good is that Marks and Spencer story? It, it really is a, a personal favorite of mine. I mean, I've worked with, with Michael and the team for a little while, but I think it's it's such a good example of where company culture really utilizes the technology to, 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 to boost our existing culture and to boost our strategy and our corporate leadership. Um, and I think just one last takeaway of that is, it's so impressive when you think about the fact that M&S is primarily first line workers. Like this is a group who traditionally would be very difficult, right, for us to to connect with. So I think just a, just a massive well done to Michael and the MS team there. Really, you know, fantastic example. Um, but on to our next session. Um, and firstly, hello everyone. Great to see you all here today. Great to see so many people who are passionate about this area. So I love it. It's a personal favour of mine when I'm talking to customers about Viva Engage and Yammer. Um, my name is Nick Ledger. I am a employee experience specialist at Microsoft. Uh, and my role is I work with customers on their employee experience strategy. So everything around communications, culture, learning and development, purpose growth, whole variety of different areas. Um, but my career started in marketing and communications. Um, for many years, I was a, a Marcoms manager and I was looking at how do we start thinking about the next way of doing communications, right? We were using very static formats and um, printing, uh, static intranets, email communications. And really we needed something that was a bit more engaging and a bit more connecting. And, and really it was, it was through that that I fell into the world of Yammer and, and ultimately fell into this world of employee experience. Um, so for me, when I think about Yammer deployment, adoption, Community management, that's that's stuff that I lived and breathed for many years. So really has a, a special place in my heart and very excited to be talking to you all today on this. And um, as Pete mentioned, if there's any questions as I'm going along, please do feel free to ask. I will do my best to answer them. And if I can't, I'll certainly try and find the person who does. Um, but I wanted to start today's session with a bit of context really around what's happening at the moment. It's leading towards this, this massive investment that you're going to start seeing from Microsoft in employee experience. And really, it's been based on what we've seen as changes in employee expectations and requirements. And maybe it's a knock-on effect on the pandemic and lockdown, or maybe it's just the modernization of the way that we're looking at work. Um, but really, employees' expectations have changed, right? They've been reevaluating what's important to them. And so we've been looking at this aspect around what's important, and we've been doing quite a lot of research. And um, we published some stuff just a couple of months ago around what we found. What was really interesting is we we started to kind of develop this worth it equation. What makes it worth it for me to um, get out of bed in the morning and come to work and do a great job and feel connected to my organization? Right? What makes it really worth it for me um, to give my best? And what we found has been, been really fascinating. You know, we've, we've been talking a lot about hybrid working, flexible working, remote working, all these different areas. But what the research is showing us is that people really miss connecting with coworkers. You know, not, not just from a collaboration or seeing managers and leaders, um, but being able to socialize and get to know and engage with each other, right? To build relationships. And um, that connection has become really important. Um, really important just to make work enjoyable, right? In, in general. Um, from an insights point of view, people want to feel like they are being heard, that they're being engaged with. You know, that, that example from MS there, another great example where people feel like they are being heard by the leadership, that their voice and their opinion matters. And um, that's such an important part of two-way communication. Um, from a purpose point of view, really understanding what is it that I need to achieve? What do I need to prioritize? And also often hearing from leaders directly about what's important helps me to do that. And then from a growth point of view, really understanding how can I continue to grow and develop and build new knowledge and become valuable assets um, by learning myself, but also learning from others. So a whole variety of different areas, and, and it's not just our research. Um, this was a, a study published this year from McKinsey and Co. Um, and, and the reason I show this is because there's so many pieces that are impacted by employee experience and by tools like, like Yammer and Viva Engage. 
know, uncaring and uninspiring leaders. So these are the top reasons for people quitting, quitting work. Um, uncaring and uninspiring leaders, lack of meaningful work, unreliable and unsupportive people at work, lack of support for health and well-being, non-inclusive and unwelcoming communities. I'm sure anyone here who, who you know is involved heavily in in you know community engagement knows that this is all things that we can address through proper community tools, through better connection, better knowledge access, and ultimately improving company cultures. So we knew there's a big space here that we need to start investing in. And so what, what Microsoft's been doing is really thinking about how do we start refocusing on employee experience, right? We've got tools like Microsoft Teams where you know, the adoption just went through the roof. You know, we went from, I think it was 20 million people just before the pandemic to now 300 million people using it every month. Like it's an incredible amount of the working population. But we know now you know, people are using it for chats, they're using it for meetings, they're starting to bring applications in, but we need to start adding in more focus on employee experience. Like how do we start making just a great day from wherever I am, whether I'm in store, whether I'm in the office, whatever it might be. You know, I just need to be able to pick up a device and access everything I need with little friction. And so we've been looking at these five areas that you see on screen. We've been looking at, you know, how do we improve productivity and well-being? How do we um, help people learn and develop for all their career? How do we help people get real clarity on what they need to be doing? And um, how do we modernize communications, right? But a personal favor of mine, how do we really start to take lessons over the last few years around how people want to be communicated to and start modernizing the technology we've got in the, in the, the workspace? And then knowledge and expertise, how do we start helping people find information um, sort of in the moment they need it rather than always having to go hunting for it? So we've been refocusing on this and, and part of that refocus has been the development of this new, new, this, uh, new suite of tools that sits on top of Microsoft Teams and Microsoft 365 uh, underneath this brand called Microsoft Viva. So our aim with Microsoft Viva is to start addressing those challenges I just mentioned. And what we've been doing with Viva is, is we've been creating new stuff, we've been acquiring companies, we've been integrating existing technology, and we've been really trying to create this, this infrastructure that starts to, to create a really connected network of experiences. And so when I think about the really exciting future of this, you know, when we start getting different experiences connecting to one another, right? when I can start finding knowledge, but then finding learning material attached to it, when I can be asking questions, but also find knowledge pages that are relevant to it, um, when I can start thinking about um, data and analytics and bringing more details into uh, all these different employee experience areas. So we're really trying to think about this as a, a really interconnected platform. And obviously, you know, a really key part of this is going to be the fact that we are trying to bring Yammer really closely embedded into, into this infrastructure. And so <clears throat> when we, um, you know, this part, sorry, and so a big part of this new suite of tools has been that integration of Yammer really bringing it into Microsoft Viva, into this infrastructure. And if we think about the core purposes that Yammer has, you know, a place where I can go and express and share my best self, and where I can feel like I belong and I feel connected, and see my leaders care, feel empowered to find answers, contribute expertise, none of these elements are changing, right? We're simply creating a new interface into them that connects into a much broader set of tools and investments that allows us to innovate and drive further value. And I think my, my personal take on this is that it's a really great time for us to be doing this because the way that we engage with enterprise social networks has changed a lot since the days that that the likes of Yammer and other tools were introduced. You know, we're really going through a, a change now in how we look at connecting and engaging with people. And I think it's that time for us to really think about what do we want to be doing around these core scenarios. And so with Viva Engage, we're not changing anything in terms of the, the existing experiences they used to have. People can still connect with people across the company to build relationships and, and build social capital. They can still build communities to, to support diversity and share interests and get engaged with business initiatives. Um, we wanna be still sparking engagement between leaders and employees to understand vision and shape culture. Um, and we still wanna be exchanging knowledge and finding information. But we want to do this through this new entry point that brings um, the, all those superpowers straight back into the tools people are using day in, day out. And so Viva Engage, for all intents and purposes, is powered by Yammer behind the scenes. Everything you're used to seeing, the communities, the content, and um, the feeds, the functionality, it's all there just underneath this new Viva banner. And as you start seeing this Viva momentum building over the next few years, you know, you'll really start understanding why we're kind of going down this, this direction. Um, but we're building off great success, right? I, I just had these stats um, shared with me the other day um, around Yammer engagement, and I was quite taken aback because I always, you know, I work with many customers on their, their networks and their communities. Um, but what a fantastic set of stats when we think that almost 2 billion 
person to person connections are made each month through Yammerite. Um, almost half a billion new connections are made uh, every month. It's just absolutely fantastic. And, and to see that in organizations, as I'm sure many people here do very often, I mean, it was very rewarding for also Microsoft, but also hopefully for yourselves as well to see the, the difference you're making in your organizations. So, so for back to Viva Engage, we've got the main interface here, right? It sits within Microsoft Teams, and with that brings a lot of benefit. You know, but I think Michael touched on this about sending an announcement out from our company. That announcement going straight into Teams helps drive that connection. However much sometimes we want to drive people to multiple applications, the fact that we've got a central point here is going to be really key. And that is going to be coming to Outlook as well. So we're really trying to get to where people are, are engaging. But one of the really exciting pieces that we've recently introduced has been um, Storyline and Stories. So we've got communities, right? But actually, some of the trends and behaviours we're seeing is actually people want to have their own personal profile space. They don't want stuff necessary to see in a community. They want to have their own space for personal expression. Me as an individual, I want to go and share my profile around what's top of mind for me. And so this launched very, very recently. We're already seeing an incredible amount of active usage um, and there's even more capabilities, including the ability to do video stories um, coming next year. And so when you think about what would you use your storyline for, right? It's the place where I can go and I can celebrate work milestones, top of mind, things I'm interested in. Now, here's a great example of one of our um, uh, senior leaders, one of our product designer engineering leads for, for Microsoft 365. And he shares a weekly five minute video just on what's top of mind for him. And so really what's what's interesting for him to share? Um, I've been using it myself. I had, um, we had our CEO, Satya Nadella, who's a little bit of a celebrity internally for us. Uh, I got the privilege of being in the event and during the event, you could see the back of my head. So I took a photo of it and I put it up on, on my storyline and I had loads of questions from my colleagues saying like, what was it like? Then what did you learn? And it was a great way to just have conversations throughout that day and over the coming days around things that I was up to. And so really sharing what you're up to helps people really to connect, especially if you're not there face to face all the time, it lets people know about you. And I think in the future, when you start seeing that storyline really start to follow people, you really will start to kind of be able to engage with people's profiles from a, from a wide variety of places. And I know Sally from National Grid is going to be talking about this a bit more shortly. Um, and storyline isn't the only update. We have added a ton of new functionality, right? The Beaver Engage app and um, storyline stories in January, Q&A in Teams that's powered by Beaver Engage. The ability to up for answers, bookmarks, official communities to help us really make sure our top communities are rising to the top. Um, the ability to do um, multi-tenant B2B, so you can have external communities with multiple um, geographies around the world. Um, personal favor of mine, activity-based exploration. If you're someone who has a cluttered Yammer network, being able to automatically start to close communities off after a period of time of inactivity. Um, conversation insights, dark mode, so many great new pieces of functionality. So when I think back many years ago, when potentially some people might have been questioning, you know, where's the investment into these tools? Um, the investment is just at an all time high, which, which is so exciting. And what that's leading to is this new functionality that I'm going to be talking to now. Um, really a whole bunch of new stuff that I think is going to be quite exciting for people. So just some things to point out, everything you've seen so far, is included in what you already have today. So all your existing Yammer capabilities, the new storyline and stories functionality, they're all included in your existing licensing. Nothing is changing there. Just to be really clear on that point. Um, what we are introducing is for customers who have invested in the premium licenses for our broader Viva suite, we are gonna be providing more advanced capabilities for Viva Engage. It allows us to drive more investments into the tools and get more functionality out there. And so the first three parts of our new premium capabilities are going to consist of functionality for better connecting with leaders and tools for engaging with employees and capabilities to help us find answers. So let's have a quick look at what's, what's coming in that space. So first off, we've got premium storyline and premium storyline is going to help you to have leaders have more engaging profiles. So you'll be able to have more customization options. Um, you'll be able to automatically have people following them. So if you think like a department, having a department lead automatically um, being followed by their department or a CEO being able to be automatically followed by everyone, so that their notifications, their posts start to get surfaced more higher in the hierarchy. Um, ask me anything um, sections so we can have direct Q&A with leaders um, and then starting to provide leaders with direct analytics. 
by instead of us having to necessarily provide leaders in ourselves, actually letting leaders and individuals see what um, how they're how they're engaging and how they're um, affecting the business. And so this new Q&A aspect, this Ask Me Anything, will let you run curated Q&A sessions. You'll be able to choose which bits you want to publish. You'll be able to see what questions are top of mind for people through upvotes. Um, and afterwards, you'll be able to get automatic summaries of that Q&A to share back with people. Now, I still remember the days of running Yam Jams and then having to export all the questions and answer them all and then put them into a document and upload it. This is going to take all that heavy lifting out, out for us. Um, and those leadership capabilities aren't just going to sit on individual pages. We're actually going to create a section for you to collate leaders together. And again, just surface leaders who are relevant to you. So I would only see the leaders who are really in my chain, for example, so I can really connect with those people around the purpose and the mission and the, the things they're talking about. So Leadership Corner will start to group all those stories and those posts together from those leaders. The communities they're engaged with, the Ask Me Anything start coming up, a whole variety of different pieces. And I mentioned before the analytics piece. So from a personal point of view, for myself and for leaders, um, I'll be able to see more detailed analytics around um, my reach, around the top conversations that I've been engaging with, um, understanding um, how people are reacting, what are the top comments, what are the top reactions to my posts, um, and where are the places I'm going that I'm engaging, what are those top communities I keep gravitating back to. But further to a personal point of view, we're also looking at audience analytics. So if you're a comms lead or you're a department head or a you know a top exec, being able to look at a much broader audience of analytics and start to understand things like sentiment analysis, and um, starting to understand things like themes in your audience, what's what's what themes are positive, what themes are negative, um, what ones do I maybe need to get involved with? You know, being able to look at things like the top conversations per theme, um, so you can know whether uh, inter intervention is needed, uh, or collecting those good news stories, as Michael pointed out. Um, being able to look at audience activity over time and then looking at top conversations across the audience by views, reactions, comments, and um, by sentiment. Uh, and then finally, also being able to see things by the active communities and the post types by the audience. So really exciting changes to, to the analytics space. Um, the second piece here is, uh, is campaigns. So we're going to be providing um, really interesting functionality to drive campaigns across your networks. So being able to use hashtags to collate different conversations together, but provide much more engaging ways for people to really get involved with that campaign. So for example, being able to use a hashtag wherever I need to, having certain trackers, um, aligning leaders to this and pulling those posts and stories into one page. And so from that, I'm able to create these, these campaigns with um, different, different goals. And I can customize these however I see fit, but it might be donations, it might be miles you're on, it might be volunteer hours, impressions, and um, whatever it might be, you can start to configure those campaign goals. And so anyone then who's posting about a, a certain campaign, it will automatically be pulled onto that campaign page. And what's going to be really interesting is that we're going to be adding in the ability to add things like banners and badges to our profiles as well. So we can really start helping to elevate certain campaigns when they're really you know, areas of passion for people. And of course, we're going to bring campaign analytics alongside that as well. So really looking at top conversations for those campaigns, who are top content creators. A really interesting part of this is employees and leaders. So giving you a split so you can help understand what leaders are getting involved. And um, reactions, where people are posting, um, a whole variety of different metrics. You know, where, where are those followers? Where are they engaging? So campaigns is going to be something uh, coming coming fairly soon. And then the third and final piece is uh, answers. And answers is one of my favorite new pieces of functionality because when I think back to trying to get buy-in to get investment for, for Yammer, you know, I really need to focus on what the business value was. And this really starts to hit home with that because we can actually start putting um, really kind of quantifiable numbers to some of this stuff. And I'll show you what I mean by that in a second. But Essentially, Answers will utilize all the Q&As that you've had across your, your network. So every time someone's used the question functionality and someone's marked the best answer, that's going to be feeding into this engine. And so I can go in here and I could ask a question like, what virtual team building activities would you recommend? And it's going to give me suggestions of ones that might already help answer that, that question. And if it hasn't been answered, I'm able to post that answer, I'm able to add certain topics to it and then I can get the best answer from the right experts. 
But what's really exciting is we're going to be bringing in gamification elements to help encourage people to support others and to really you know help others with their answers. Um, but also really start looking at the hours um, that people are really engaging with. Um, so the hours that we're saving by helping other people to answer. So for myself, I'm able to see how many answers I've helped people with and the questions I've answered, the questions I've asked, people I've helped with. Um, but what I mentioned really exciting is that when you look at this from an organization level, you'll be able to see this by actual numbers. So when you're talking about the value of the network, you're able to actually say, well, through Q&A, we've been able to save the business 10 hours, 100 hours, whatever it might be, and um, through those analytics. So really exciting changes coming to, to the network. But as mentioned, this is part of our Viva Premium suite that's, uh, that's coming. So just in terms of timelines, leadership, that's going to be coming in Q1. So before March time, same for campaigns and same for answers as well. So really quick, exciting changes coming in only just a few months. So that is a very quick run through of all the changes that are coming. Um, lots of new stuff coming in early 2023, lots more to come after that. And um, just in case there's abuse to people, we have got a ton of Viva Engage adoption materials. So if you're worrying about the messaging of, of Yammer to Viva Engage, we've got some stuff on here that can, can help. Um, if it's fairly new to you, we've got our fast track team who can help you with every step through deployment. And then finally, We've also got our Viva Engage and Yammer customer connection community. So if you're interested, please do email James and they will add you to this community. It's a really great one for connecting with other customers and sharing ideas and suggestions and hearing from the product team. And also, if you're ever interested in contributing to our, our research around what's next, um, please do sign up with a link, link here. So Pete, that is everything I was gonna show for the team today. Uh, happy to take, take some questions. Yeah, that was, that's brilliant. Thank you so much for that update. I think uh, a lot of people on the call have um, got had a lot of questions that you've probably gone a long way to answering, um, if not answered completely. I know that the Q&A was buzzing. Um, I'm just going to jump in and ask the, the, the big question that um, we knew would come up, <laughs> which is uh, there's a couple of questions in here saying, so what's happening with naming? Um, will there be a point where Yammer becomes Viva Engage? Do we do we know if the name is going to change? Um, a lot of people are, have that question on their mind. I, I, I'm sure that there's some constraints around exactly what you can say on this front, Nick, but is there a steer? Um, do we know, is, is it going to come together at one point and be just Viva Engage or just Yammer again? I think at the moment, the team of, you know, from, from the initial launch have said we're not, changing anything, you know, we're really looking at this as Viva Engage powered by Yammer. You might notice like there's going to be new capabilities coming into Viva Engage that aren't necessarily powered by Yammer, for example, like the questions element has loads of, of what we call Viva Topics functionality in. So we're really trying to rethink it. I think one of the things that I would say is the product team are really open to this. Like they've commented quite publicly on the initial announcement posts. They're listening to feedback. So if you feel really strongly about this and, and it is causing confusion, um, let us know, like keep feeding back to us. That's that's helping us to tell that story internally around that, you know, what the, the ultimate decision might need to be. But I think for the moment, you know, Yammer's not going away. It's a very established brand in a lot of organizations. To unpick that and change that is, is you know, a huge, huge program of works. Equally, Viva Engage opens up new opportunities. So what I would say is, you know, really focus on Viva Engage as being that, that window into it, into teams, in the same way we did with communities for a long time, right? Like nothing's really changed on that front. Like we've essentially renamed communities and added a bit more branding to it. Um, but customers, you know, end users really got to, to understand it at that point. So that's, that's probably all I can probably say on that front is keep feeding back to us. Let us know if it is causing you significant challenges. Um, I think, you know, of all the different teams I work with at Microsoft, the, the Viva Engage Yammer team are really open and engaged and listening to feedback. So, yeah, please do keep it coming. Cool. Um, one other question I want to pull out before I'm, I might then open up um, and see if anyone wants to come off mute. But um, an interesting question here that I think touches on a lot of people's uh, challenges around having the two brands essentially coexisting. So the question is, will you update the Yammer mobile app with these new functionalities of stories, storyline, leadership corner, etc.? cetera? Um, will that appear in the Yammer mobile app or just in Viva Engage via Teams? What's, what's happening on that front? 
Yeah, great question. So yeah, you know, there will be that kind of feature parity. So yeah, absolutely, you'll have stories and storylines, they will go across. So no one will be without the same functionality. Um, so yeah, no, nothing to worry about there. Well, cool. there's there's a bunch of other questions, a lot of other questions um, around quite specific things in the Q&A that it would be great if you're able to, if you have the time to jump into the Q&A and respond to as many of those as possible. Um, but I did want to see if anyone fancies coming off mute and asking a question, I do want to open up to the floor and give a chance for a different voice to be heard. So is there that one brave first first person who's going to be the crazy dancer at the festival and come off mute and actually ask a question live of Nick? Attention. I think it's quite a daunting challenge we've got. Oh. Yeah, I've done it. <laughs> I, um, my name's Josh, I work for the co-op. Um, hi, Nick, we, we used to work quite close together. Um, we, we're trying to look at the minute at this sort of re, um, relaunch of Yammer slash Fever Engage. I, are you finding a lot, a lot of people are using you know, the name change as sort of a, a platform to jump start? Uh, and, if, and if so, how, how are people best leading off with um, with the, the explaining that Viva Engage is is sort of like new and improved, I guess, really over Yammer because, uh, and I'm sure it's unique to, to my business, but Yammer kind of launched uh, and slowly turned into a bit of a, a moan space. Um, and you know, we want we started to see some positivity on the network, but I'm just wondering if you've got any um, any sort of advice on relaunching as Yammer uh, as Viva Engage, sorry, rather than Yammer. Yeah, good, good. brilliant question, Josh. It's, um, you know, I think it's that exciting time to be talking about that evolution of what you were trying to achieve the first time around. So, you know, we do see this occasionally where, you know, Yama Network might then fall into, you know, into kind of certain ways of working, IT tickets or, or you know, moaning or whatever it might be. And I think you know, with the changes that are coming and the improvements that we've made, I think it's a great chance to relaunch and say, Yammer's evolved, it's it's moved into Microsoft Teams, for example, so your tools are in one place, it's a great chance to do that. But also probably to put in some changes to the network, I think Michael mentioned before about restricting all company. Now this is completely personal preference, it's up to yourselves, um, but I see great success with this because all companies sometimes does become that space where people do go and have a rant or it's the one place they know to go maybe post something and i think having that structure in place to say this is actually going to be the stuff that's going to be really important to you i use it all company really effectively but as part of that the thing i always say to people and michael's done a great job with this as well is think about your top level communities like where are you directing people to go to like what have you structured out the top 20 10 20 whether it's department based whether it's employee resource groups whether it's social csr whatever it might be have you mapped them out as your official communities and how are you nurturing that top level because that top level is probably 70 percent of your engagement right so that's the level that you really want to make sure the community managers are uh, trained they understand what they need to be doing they understand how to turn people around and it's not a big community of people to educate right you're talking about 10 20 people that you need to help make sure that they understand how to use the tools the tier underneath that then are the ones that really are the organic growth the ones that people are passionate about and they might ultimately become official communities and they will also need community management guidance but i'd really say using that as a chance to say we're evolving you know We've engaged, Yammer's moving to Vive Engage. Here's um, our old company is now going to be for you know, communications from our leaders to help you keep you, you know, in the loop and give you clarity. The official communities are ones that we really recommend, and here's our top 10 for you to go and visit. And also, here's some other ones that might, you know, I'm really helping guide people to the right place for the right use case. Um, we often talk in Microsoft, we've got a community called Commodionville. And I love this group because it's, it's a very American phrase, but um, it basically means a grumpy person. But the tagline of the group is where careers go to die. Um, and so we don't shy away from, from negative or or, um, or those moans. We, we try and navigate them to a community where we can then address them. And we're trying to remind people that let's keep it constructive. But then equally taking that negativity and turning it into something positive, right? Addressing those needs. So yeah, I think it's a good chance for anyone who's looking at how do I revitalize my network? This is, you know, I don't think there'll ever be a better time to really relaunch with Vigor around some really key use cases. 
So yeah, I hope nice. that helps, Josh. Yeah, that's really interesting. Thank you very much. Josh, thank you so much for, for um, having the nerve to ask that question in person. Really appreciate it. Time is up in terms of questions.